Hey guys and welcome back to another Imagine Ford tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to set up where you can pick up and drag ragdoll bodies. As you see we have three different AIs here. We're going to be able to pick them up and drag them up while they're in ragdoll. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So you can see they've all fallen to the floor as they're in ragdoll. If I go up to one I can hold G and you can have it press or hold if you want. And if I move my mouse you can see I am now dragging it. And with this system as well it is also going to be dragging it by a specific bone. So if I hold it by the leg I'm going to be dragging by the leg, same with the arm, hand and head, and all of the good stuff which you'd want as well. So this is what we're setting up today, obviously I'm doing it in first person, but this would technically work in third person as well, it just might be a bit more difficult for you to actually look at the AI to grab it like I am in first person. And again, this isn't just specific for one, it will work for all of them which you want as well. So you can pick it up or you can just drag it along the floor, whatever you want. And I was spinning around like that just because I'm moving quite quickly. So obviously what you could do is maybe when the player is dragging an AI, they're going to be walking a lot slower because obviously that would make a more realistic sense as well because they're dragging a heavy body around with them. But this is what we make today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So what we want to do first is we want to set up the ragdoll in our enemy BP or just in your AI or the ragdoll which you want to carry around. Now you may already have this set up, great. If you don't, I'm just going to show you a very quick thing now. So this is my enemy BP here. It's just simply a duplicate of the third person character. And on the mesh, what I've done is I've changed the collision presets to be custom. What I did first was I went to Ragdoll, so change it to Ragdoll, then change it to custom. And the reason we're doing custom is so what you can do is then set the visibility trace response to block. That way our line trace will actually collide and work with it. So make sure you've done that. You've changed it to Ragdoll, so the object type is a physics body. And then you also have all of these settings here for the collision as well. And then on event begin play, we're going to get the mesh and set simulate physics to true. So we have it tick like that. So then when we hit compile, save and play, you can see they're all going to fall to the floor with a ragdoll physics like so. So that's going to work perfectly. What we also want to do is we want to set up a quick action mapping for us to be able to actually grab stuff. So to do that, we're going to go to edit, project settings, go down to input on the left here and simply add in an action mapping naming this one grab or drag or anything along those lines and I'm going to set it to the G key and again you can set this to absolutely whatever you like as well so G, F, E, whatever you want but I think for me G makes the most sense so I'm going to close that and open up my character blueprint so for me that's going to be content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character now the first thing we want to do in here is we want to add something called a physics handle and that's going to allow us to just simply manipulate the physics of the enemy AI so we can drag it about so we're going to add a component up in the top left and add a physics handle, compile, save, and that's all we need to do with it. We don't need to mess about with it or change anything on it. And again, what this does is it just allows us to move other physics objects around. So now let's set up the actual code for grabbing stuff and moving about. So now let's actually set up the code for grabbing something. So what I'm going to do is find some empty space, then I'm going to right click and get the action mapping which we've just made, and I named mine grab. So action events, grab there. Out of pressed, what I'm going to do is I want to be able to hold this. So I'm doing G, so I want to hold G to be grabbing and let go to release. If you want to do that as well, then do what I'm doing. But if you want to be a toggle, so you press G, come out of pressed and get a flip flop. And then the rest of the code I'm doing, do out of A and it will come back to B later on. That's for toggling, but I want to hold, so I'm going to do it out of pressed. So come out of that and we're going to get a line trace for objects here like so and the reason we're doing line trace for objects is because we can come out of objects types and get make array and change this to be physics body so we're now only going to be searching for essentially a physics body so this line trace will only work if the physics has been simulated i.e we can't just grab a wall and move that it has to have physics enabled i.e it's ragdolling and to actually draw this line trace what we want to do is go from our camera so get a reference to your camera out of this get world location connecting that into start so the start of this line trace is where the player's camera is which is obviously where they're going to be looking and then the end of it we want to just go a certain amount of units in front of the player's camera so we're going to come out of the camera again and get forward vector which is obviously going to get the forward facing direction of the camera return value of that is going to be a vector multiplied by a float and this float is how far in front of the player you want this to go so again, this is the length of the line trace. I'm going to set it to 500, but you can set it to absolutely whatever you like. 
essentially again this is how far the player can reach in their grab and then we're going to come out of the top get world location again and get a vector plus a vector connecting that into the multiplication there as well and then that is going into the end of the line trace so essentially what we're doing here is we're just making sure that the line trace is going to go in a straight line forwards as well so again, this addition keeps it going in a nice straight line so what we've set up now is simply a line trace which will just go 500 units in front of the player so if we just change draw debug type from non to for duration and press g you can see we have this red line appear like so and that works like that so you can see mine's hitting the floor but it's not actually colliding with it because the physics isn't enabled so that's working perfectly so what we also want to do is after the line trace for objects we're going to hold down b left click to get a branch connecting the condition into the return value of the line trace and that essentially means if we actually hit something do the rest of the code so it's not going to try and do the other part of the code if we don't hit anything which will just save us from some errors later on if we don't do that so the out hit we're going to break hit result so we can get access to all the different options and settings of the thing that we did collide with and we want to use the impact point and the hit component and also the hit bone name so the first thing we want to do with this is right click hit component promote it to a variable naming this current ragdoll target and we're doing this just so we can have quick and easy access to it later on because this here is what we are currently dragging so the ragdoll enemy which we're dragging around then we're going to right click impact point promote that to a variable as well to again have nice and easy access to it naming this ragdoll target lock for location so where it is in the world currently straight away it's going to be at this point where it is already ragdoll on the floor and we're going to update this value later on to actually move it about then what we want to do is get reference to our physics handle from the top right components list because again this is how we move physics objects so we want to be using this out of the physics handle we're going to grab component at location so it's a nice simple function which is already made and set up for us it's going to grab a certain component which we set up at a certain location so obviously the target is the physics handle the component is going to be the current ragdoll target as that is what we want to grab the ragdoll target lock is going to go into the grab location as that is where it is and the in bone name is just going to be hit bone name of this break hit result there we haven't promoted that to a variable because we don't need to access it later on as well but we do with the current target and the location so this is now going to grab the ragdoll so we've set that part up perfectly we're now grabbing the ragdoll so we can then later on manipulate it and the first part of that manipulation is actually setting the location to be correct first off so when we do try to move it it's not going to glitch out so to do that what we need to do is get a reference to our camera from up in the top left then get world transform to get the transform of the camera which is obviously the location rotation and scale and out of the totality of this we want to get an inverse transform location as you can see here what it does is it transforms a position by the inverse of the supplied transform so again we're just manipulating the location and position of it by the inverse of the camera's transform and the location which we want to manipulate is obviously going to be the ragdoll target location variable which we just set up here and the return value is again going to be the ragdoll target location so we're manipulating it and resetting it as that is then going to be our new location so again we've now set up grabbing it and the first part of fixing the location next we want to actually update and move the location so to do this we're going to go all the way back to the start of our code and just underneath it we're going to right click and add a custom event naming this one update ragdoll lock again for location straight out of this we're going to get an is valid node the one with the question mark next to it with the input object being our current ragdoll target variable we set up earlier so we are only going to try and update the ragdoll location if we actually have a valid ragdoll target to move the location of so if we're not dragging anything and this is somehow called which it shouldn't be but just in case it is or there's an error with it this isn't going to fire off and give us any other errors and break the game so is not valid isn't going to do anything out of is valid we're going to again get the physics handle and there's another nice simple function set for us and that is going to be set target location you can do location and rotation if you want but from the testing i did location is fine and that is going to go into is valid there now the new location of this we want to do something similar to what we did up here so what i'm going to do is select the camera get world transform and ragdoll target location copy those and then paste them down here except out of get world transform now this time what we're going to do 
is just transform the location. So not an inverse, just a normal transform location there, which again is just going to transform the location position by the supply transform. So it's the same thing, just not an inverse this time. And the return value is going to go into the new location of the target location there. So again, we're just going to be moving it based upon the transformed location. But what we also want to do is we want to make sure that this is a loop because at the moment it's only going to do this once, but we want to be continually doing this for as long as we are grabbing and holding the ragdoll. So after set target location, I'm going to hold down D, left click to get a delay, with the duration being 0.01, .01, and completed is going to go to update ragdoll location call function, which is then going to make this into a loop. And the loop will end when the current ragdoll target is not valid, so when we drop it and we're not grabbing it anymore. Now you can do this off of event tick instead, so then you don't have to do a loop, it's just event tick, but I only want this to be firing off while we need it, i.e. while we're grabbing a ragdoll. And I did think of other ways of doing it as well, so it only updates when the mouse moves, however that wasn't updating quick enough for it to work, it looked a little bit glitchy and it didn't look too great. So this is the best, most efficient way I found of doing it. What we need to do now is actually call this function to start with, so we're going to go all the way back to the end of the other code where we set the location initially, and then simply call function update ragdoll location. So now what we've done is we've set up grabbing and moving the ragdoll, we also now need to set up releasing it. So we're going to go back to the beginning of the code and come off of released of our input action. Now if you did the flip flop you want to come off of B, but I didn't so I'm coming off of released. We're going to get the physics handle again, and out of this we're going to simply release component. Again another nice and simple function set up for us like that. And now that is going to do it, but what we also need to do is set the current ragdoll target and just leave it like that. That way it is going to invalidate it, so it set it to nothing, which is then going to work perfectly for all of this stuff down here, so it's not going to try and move something which we're not grabbing. So if we compile, save, that should be the code now done for us and working perfectly. So let's hit play and test this out. You see we have these three ragdolls, if I were to walk up to one, grab it, so by holding G I can then move it like so. Working perfectly at this, I am dragging and moving it about perfectly like so. What I'm also going to do is turn off the line trace by changing draw debug type from for duration to non, hit play and then you can see if I hold G I now can't see anymore so it just looks a little bit nicer. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. What we've done is we've set up a simple ragdoll system in which we can hold down a button or press it and we can now move, drag about and pick up these ragdolls working perfectly like so. And again, what it's done is it's by a bone as well, so I can move it by the head if I wanted, or by the foot if I wanted to as well, like that. And again, it works with as many different ones as we want, not just for one specific ragdoll. It will work for anything which is simulating physics. So this would also just work for a cube which is simulating physics as well. If I were to just show you that, again, that's not really the purpose of this video, but just to show that it does still work as well. So I'm going to go to the details and simply simulate physics, we should be able to now just pick this up and drag it about as well, as you can see there, working perfectly. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.